Hi, welcome to Down to the Root. I'm your host, Bethany Jean, and today in studio, I have a very special friend, Ryan Shuck. He's a musician, he's a restaurateur with casual five restaurants, but he's the founding member of Orgy, also Dead by Sunrise with um, Chester Bennington from Lincoln mm -hmm. Park. Um, also, now in Edema, we have Julian Kay. Yeah. You also co. Yeah, I co wrote music uh, with some corn. stuff with corn. Yeah, yeah. It's good so stuff. He's a busy guy. Yeah. But I want to talk to you about the beginning. So, you were raised in Bakersfield. I was raised uh, a half hour outside of Bakersfield in an even more godforsaken uh, desert town okay. called Taft, California. Okay. Which I'm actually really proud of. And I'm really proud of Bakersfield as well. And we'll, we'll probably, as the story unfolds, I'll be able to say why. But uh, So tell me how being raised in Taft kind of molded who you are and who you've become. Um, it, it's a funny thing because being raised in Taft, um, I never wanted to leave Taft as a little kid mm -hmm. because there was everything there. There was these fields to play in. There was just, you know, dirt and hills. And yeah. I was a super nerdy kid. I liked Star Wars. You know, I'm, I'm still obsessed with Star Wars. As you know, I have lightsabers in my office and stuff <laughs> like that. And I probably, we need to do Star Wars I together. I probably <laughs> chased you with a lightsaber in my own home. Um, I walk around dressed like Kylo Ren uh, pretty much every day. Um, but, you know, when I was a little kid growing up and everything, I was just like, why on earth would I ever live anywhere else? You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really understand that it was hotter than heck. I didn't understand that it probably wasn't the job opportunities that I might want. But then as I finally got older and I picked up a guitar, um, everything changed because I could put my fingers on the guitar and make it sound like Metallica. Mm -hmm. And I could make it sound like all the... It, but how old were you then? Uh, probably probably 15 or 16. So it was a little late, but it was in high school. But um, I saw one of my first bandmates, Dennis Shin, um, funny enough, doesn't like me anymore. But uh, I saw him. Shout out Dennis. We got, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> um, he, we were locked out of the high school gym during gym class because we were kind of like the, you know, like leather jackets and we were like into heavy metal and everything. So we were kind of a little bit outcasts. And he, he was a drummer and he did a drum beat on the door. It was like a Metallica song. He goes, and I was like, how can you just do that? And he's like, oh, I can play drums. I'm like, well, you can just play Metallica stuff? He goes, yeah. And, and I just realized that these people on MTV are just like people like me. Mm -hmm. And if I just look at what they're doing and I figure it out and I, and I started figuring out, I can sound like them. And then my brain started going, you know, because I was an artist and everything. I was a more of a conventional artist. Mm -hmm. And um, that creative side of me started coming out and I started realizing that for me to do the things that I wanted to do, I had to maybe go to Bakersfield. <laughs> and then I went to Bakersfield. <laughs> you had to move on up. <laughs> and then I had to maybe go to LA. Yeah. And then, it, and that's, that's how the great migration started. And that's when I met Jonathan Davis, who is the lead singer of Korn, mm -hmm. who was my first singer, my first bandmate. Um, Dennis, me, Dave Daru, who is uh, the bass player and founder of Edema which is another multi-platinum band that was kind of in our, in our sort of like uprising of the Bakersfield uprising that mm -hmm. kind of changed modern heavy music. You know, Korn led the way. Orgy definitely mm -hmm. shook the charts up because at the time, everyone looked like they worked at a gas station or were in Nirvana. And we came out with lipstick and eyeliner yeah. and tight clothing and yeah. black hair, you know, this whole vibe. And, and, and we were electronic, but heavy. And so we were the first electronic band to like, you know, you know, us and Prodigy were the first ones to kind of shake that mm -hmm. top 10 level on well, Billboard, Prodigy. you know, in, in, yeah. in since Depeche Mode. I used you know? to always laugh when you and I first met, which was like, we just realized almost a decade ago. Oh, it's like nine years yeah. ago. Ridiculous. But you and I looked alike. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we had the same haircut and we're wearing the same <laughs> clothes in this era. We were just, I mean, I guess I haven't changed that much. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I was wearing like pleather, you know, yeah. pants and had yeah. short, I've just doubled down. spiky hair. I've just been like, look, okay, I like wearing black. So yeah. I've just doubled down. I've given up on the whole thing. Like I want spikes and I want to look like I'm, 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 I work, I'm part of the first order. You know, it's like, I just like it. I'm sorry. I'm going to dress like that all the time. Don't you It's going to be a space Viking or something like that. It's basically space what I'm Viking. going for. And I, just, Viking trooper. I do it in my everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. There isn't like a more pleasant version. I, I like it, <laughs> but you're still so cuddly yes, spite of all be. your spikes. I can be. Yeah, when I when I take off the spikes and stuff. So, what would you have told your 18 year old self then, back in Bakersfield? Think of yourself in your bedroom. You're playing guitar. You you already know these people are just like me. 
they just actually did something? That's a good question. I, I, I think at that time, I didn't actually know that you could make money playing music. I knew the Rolling Stones were rich. Mm -hmm. I knew the Beatles were really rich and famous and popular. I knew that Metallica was big and probably had a lot of money. Yeah. I had no clue that what we were doing, you know, tuning our guitars down and do -do -do, making these crazy heavy sounds and everything. I had no clue that that would ever become a job, that it could become a job, that this all existed. I had no clue. Um, I think if I could have gone back, I would have maybe said, hey, look, hairdressing's awesome and you're going to make a lot of money doing that because I, I, was, I was an aspiring yeah. hairdresser at the time. And that's what I thought I would do for, for money and music would be the thing I did for fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think I would have told myself. about you so much, by the way. Yeah. It was like, I yeah, just love it. Fun. So and then hair was yeah. my work, but hair was also fun. But yes. So I really you're enjoyed it. You're creating and then you're creating. Totally. I did half like the business of my life doing hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned half of my business skills doing hair because how do you learn how to sit down and do this and interview mm -hmm. or talk to people? You do it on the hour, every hour for 12 hours a day doing hair. So the music deals, um, all the relationships, all that stuff really honestly to hair, you know, yeah. that's a, it's a really, really, really cool feather to have in your cap if you can do that successfully. Mm -hmm. And you can, I can, we have that. It's never going to leave us. I've been We're always going to kind of so be hairdressers. So blessed and fortunate. Yep. Doing hair for 20 years, and it is why yep. I interview people. Yep. It, it is why. Yep. And I saw the progression happen. I was yeah. like, it's so brilliant what you're doing. I'm like, this is so cool. I was like, cool. I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a departure for you at all. And so, and for me too, um, doing what I've done and being a lead singer now and all this kind of stuff. I think I would have gone back and just said, told, told the little Ryan, the 18 year old guy that, that what you're doing it, it has huge ramifications and you can communicate on a mass scale if you want to. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, you know, even ba Bakersfield for me, that was like the, I moved to the big city. You know, I got, you know, I got an apartment, you know, and it was, yeah. it was $300 a month <laughs> or something like that. Those were the days. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that I was like an adult, like I'd, I'd done it, but then. LAPD came back to town and who are the, the hometown heroes watched our, our show and discovered Jonathan and asked him to come sing with them. And we were like, whoa, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. They were like the popular band from Bakersfield that lived in LA and they became corn. Did you guys then I all started, kind of move to LA at the same time? No, they Did moved to LA together? first. So they were the trailblazers and they were a band called LAPD and we all looked up to them and they were just a little bit older than us, but old enough to, they came down here and they got a, a like a small record deal and, um, and we were all kind of, you know, oh, that's so cool. We're in awe of them. And we would come see them when they would play in Bakersfield. And um, when they came to our show at, I forget the, the small venue, and they just heard there's this really kind of a cool band with this really good singer, which I agree, Jonathan's incredible. And they came and saw, and they asked John to come to LA and sing with them. Mm -hmm. We were stoked. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, oh no, we're losing our singer. We were like, rad, LAPD yeah. likes Jonathan. Yeah. And so then it later, it pretty quickly became Corn, and they started doing this really relevant, really kind of this music that a lot of people didn't get. But we were like, oh, this is amazing. And it was just this cool thing. And when they, they invited us to come see them at a place that was called just down the street called English Acid, and they opened up with Blind, which is a song that we wrote together in our first band, me and John wrote. And um, the, the crowd just imploded. And I'm in the crowd. I, I would just, I couldn't believe what it did to people. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it started hitting me that I was like, okay, you know, I was a part of writing this song and this band is like crushing it. Mm -hmm. Of course, everything they do is amazing, but I think it really hit me that like, we're all from Bakersfield. We are about to crush music, mm -hmm. modern. I mean, these guys are going to crush. I didn't really put myself in that category yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I was just happy that they were playing the song, Neat, whoa. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that later on it would become one of the biggest, you know, one of the songs that changed modern heavy music, that I would end up making money from it, that they would come back and help me put together Orgy, sign Orgy, take us on tour with them, you know, Family Values, mm -hmm. Rammstein, Orgy, Corn, Limp Bizkit, and Ice Cube. That was my first tour. No big Thank deal. you, Corn. Yeah. You know, so I had no idea that it would become that, but it did become that. And um, they are, I will, I will never be able to express my gratitude to those guys. I do though, whenever I see them, every yeah. time I see them, <laughs> I even just send them a little text. You see them regularly. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, yes, I see them regularly and they are wonderful. I just got off tour with Jonathan actually last year. So 
So it's still that. 25 years later. So cool. 27 years later. Yeah. We were in our first band together when we were 18 yeah. Over years half your life. old. Yeah, 17 cool. or 18. Um, what? And I'm 24 now. <laughs> and you are, look so good. <laughs> Thank <too>. you. <laughs> it looks so old for 24. <laughs> that that uh, tour life. <laughs> yeah. I'm very mature 24. <laughs> you are mature 24. <laughs> so what accomplishment do you feel you're most proud of? Um, I'm not, I don't, uh, I think I'm most proud of Orgy. I think I'm proud, I'm, I think I'm proud of all of the music that has really, I'm proud of the album that we did with Chester because, mm -hmm. you know, not only was, it was he a best friend of mine, but in my opinion, he was the voice of a generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's literally, in, in, my, in my humble opinion, he is our Bono of our, of our age. So not only was he this this giant thing, he was also my little my little friend and my little brother, and and we all have a relationship with him and love him so Very much. Beloved. And to get to make an album with someone of that, someone that incredible, someone that get, makes your arm hair stand up when you're in the room and he's singing, you know, I'm really really proud of that. But I'm also really really proud of like the orgy stuff that we did um, that was able to communicate on a mass scale with people, and we did something in the face of. Yeah, the radio sounded like this one thing, and we came out and did this really disruptive thing. And I'm really proud of that kind of stuff. I'm proud of my relationship with, with Jonathan and the Corn guys and what they've done. I'm super, super honored and proud um, that I was a part of Blind and, and Daddy and some of those initial songs that mm -hmm. kind of are part of that movement and what they did with it and all that kind of stuff. So I think, it's, if anything, it's going to be art and communication. I'm proud of that kind of stuff, being able to touch millions of people is always going to be the ultimate privilege for me, even if I never get to do it on that scale again, you know, because it always goes like this. It's mm -hmm. never, very seldom is it like this forever. Right, right. You know, um, so I'm just, I'm just really, really, I think that's what I'm proud of. And you've had some really great collaborations. Are there any collaborations you would like to dream up for yourself? Like any dream artist you'd love to make music with? that you haven't yet? A lot of them are, you know, I'd love to do something with Depeche Mode if I could. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, that's like one of my, you know, and they're alive. I'll fall over. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I would I would just, I would die, but they're so, I met Martin Gore for the first time last year. And- I was um, so jealous of that. Part. I'm just like, what do, I, what do I even do, you know? And I thought we were gonna go to dinner and I was terrified. I mean, I was, I couldn't even, I was about to throw up. <laughs> I've never been like that, you know, because I know it's so all, silly. They're all, just people. But, we know a lot of people, right? Yeah. But it's like this is Depeche Mode. Yeah. And there's been enough of a, a chance for me to meet them and hang out with them, and Amir knows them, and and so it's all kind of casual. And it turns out he married uh, a friend, someone I know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I know his wife. And <laughs> this is just how the how world works now. But um, you know, I just, I just, it would be tricky for me because I would just have to break through this sort of barrier of like, oh my God, you're, yeah, yeah, mode, yeah. you know, I would love to do something like that. That would be kind of like a, I could just jump off a bridge afterwards. <laughs> You'd have to jump in after me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, right now there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool artists. Um, um, and we have been just collaborating, like the birthday massacre is just it, really good friends of ours, a band that we love, a band that we just got off tour with, uh, uh, with Jonathan Davis, Birthday Massacre, and Julian Kay. And then they just flew out from Toronto and said, you know, work with me at my house and my studio. And we did a really cool collaboration with them. So it, it's funny because I know that they aren't maybe a super, they are very popular, but they're not on the radio. But it's those kind of collaborations with friends that I look forward to and love the most. You know, um, I want to do a collaboration again with Jonathan, um, but with Julian Kay. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's gonna happen. But again, it's friends. It's people that I know and love and like. That's who I wanna do stuff with. So yeah. it's not, I, I think Depeche Mode would be that like dream. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, that's, that's what I cry asking. myself to sleep to at night. Yeah. <laughs> Please. On your printed Depeche Mode pillowcase. Yes, yes, my DM <laughs> pillow, yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna rapid fire some questions. Okay. Uh -oh. So what would you most like to be remembered by? Talent, wisdom, kindness, or originality? Oh. <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, or in what order? I, you're all of these things. Originality, but... kindness. What was the other one? What was the other Wisdom two? Wisdom or talent. Ooh. 
okay, talent than wisdom because I don't think that I'm super wise and I also don't think that I'm very talented. But I do think that the older I get, especially, I try to be kind and I'm trying to be more of a kind person. I'd love to be remembered for that even though I didn't succeed my whole life. Mm-hmm. But I definitely have tried to be original and I think that I've done some really original stuff. And so I, I do definitely hope that I'm remembered for mm-hmm. that. I think originality is really important. Yeah, especially too. for artists. Me too. I mean, sometimes it trumps all that stuff. But yeah. kind, kindness, though, is an outlier. I you know. need to be kind. It's almost unfair to throw ki- kindness even in the loop. To- totally, totally. Because it should just be a given. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's kind of the one thing you do have a choice in. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. you don't really get to choose how talented no. you are. Nope. Or you how original hard. you can work at it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Work hard, but you should just. Yeah. Be kind. If you can work hard and be talented and be kind, I mean, you're. That's pretty. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't be successful and, and, and make hard decisions, but you can be kind. Is there anything about yourself that you feel is misunderstood? Yeah. Um, I'm sure that especially in this age, this day and age and the way that you have to be with social media, social media is a marketing tool for me. Mm-hmm. It isn't a, a personal, um, uh, it's not a platform for me to talk about you will not see in my personal media, um, for instance, like right now, I'm having a really bad stomach problem. <laughs> so I'm Sorry. Anyways, it's normal stuff, right? Like I have, I'm having some sort of really, it's been lasting for like months. I'm not going to be on social media talking about how my stomach feels and da 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 And he's went to the doctor today and oh, visit number two. And I understand a lot of people do that. Um, I think a misunderstood thing about me is because I run things the way I run it, that I ha- that it's an ego thing and that it's not. Mm-hmm. at all. Yes. All you're seeing is what I want you to see. All you're seeing, it's all designed to just, to, it's, it's, it's a connection device for the people that love my art. Right. That's what it is. So you're not seeing any, you know, people write me, friends write me, they're like, oh yeah, you know, must be so cool. Da, 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 da. And I always feel a little bad because that's not what I'm trying to be. It's mm-hmm. not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put things out that I think are relevant to, even if they're selfies or whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. not a selfie out of ego or, or mm-hmm. because I'm obsessed with myself. There's usually a reason it's to communicate a thing that we're doing or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. So it's really to communicate with fans. It's, to, it's not really a, a, note, uh, uh, a communication device for my, for my personal friends because they have my phone number. Right. Right. I can text them. Yeah. So it's not really a, you know, oh, hey, look, I'm on a private jet. Woo, I'm rich. I'm not really rich. That's not the point. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like, this is crazy, mm-hmm. you know, and we're sharing something nuts because I'm thinking it's just as nuts as the fans would think, you know, right. it's not a brag, you yeah. know? So I think that that maybe is, a but there's a big difference between like a brag and like a praise report. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like yeah, it's okay yeah. to be like, I'm having a good day and yeah. this is really great. This happening mm-hmm. to me or I worked mm-hmm. really hard and I made an accomplishment Th- and the people that love mm-hmm. you and support you love and support yep. those posts. They aren't yep. like offended by it. Yep. Yep. No. I agree. I agree. But you'd be surprised. I mean, you do. I do get that little undercurrent of and I don't blame anyone, but I, I get that, especially from people who I, I realize that they're not living the life that I'm living or that you're living. Everyone has a different experience and perspective. And I know that, that Facebook, Instagram, all these kind of, kinds of things might just be this thing as personal thing for them. And they're not understanding mm-hmm. that for me, it absolutely is not. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is not. It's a public, it's a, just another form of communication because mm-hmm. there's no MTV anymore. There's no traditional media anymore. There's no, yeah, I used yeah. to be able to just get on MTV and do that thing, mm-hmm. you know, and then you could have your personal. Well, now our MTV and our personal is Facebook, Instagram, whatever social it is that we can engage in and, and talk with our fans. That's our, that's our communication device. Right. So, um, you know, it's not my personal, you know, writing me on Facebook typically it won't always get an answer because there's 6,000 messages there that are unanswered because I can't, right. I can't do the deluge. Personal texts are, yep. those are my more personal, you know? It doesn't mean that I don't use them all because I get messages everywhere, but um, that would be a mis- misunderstanding. I wish, I wish it wasn't there, but at the same time, yeah, I'm a big boy. I can take my, I can take my vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> I can take the misunderstanding. Um, well, in closing, do you have a motto that you stand by? Um, it changes because I always try to follow uh, inspirational people and inspirational mm-hmm. things. Um, every everything. I mean, there's all sorts of people now that follow like guys like Jocko Willink and you know who's a Navy SEAL who wrote my favorite book of last year. Um, I don't know if it was written last year, but I read it last year. It's called Extreme Ownership, and um, it's just this level of owning your own 
you know, what you're doing, it's at this at this mega high level, you know, and I really, really dig that. And I don't know that there's a motto, but I think extreme ownership is definitely like that, that, that concept I like that. is a concept that I definitely live by right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's literally saved my butt so many times. I'd recommend everyone read that book, by the way. Yeah. What yeah. is it again? Extreme, extreme Ownership extreme. by Jocko Willink and, and, and it, read it twice. And also the uh, five languages of love. That was one of the best. No, that was one of the best books I'd read. Yeah. And, and you can apply that to your friends everything. and everything, not just your your lover, Coworkers, everything. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Um, where can people find you on social media? Um, the real Ryan Shuck on Instagram, um, um, and that's to combat the fake Ryan Shucks. Uh, on on Facebook, uh, it's just Ryan Shuck. It's me. I'm the one with uh, that can't accept friends anymore. Um, but you can still follow me. Um, Julian K, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Edema now. That's going to be a big deal. I'll be on some, uh, on tour this fall with Edema, Head PE and Power Man 5000, Days of Disorder Tour. I'll be on tour in 2020 with Julian K. I cannot say with who yet, but we just got a big offer. So that'll be uh, 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 March, April, May. Um, Harmonic Disruptor from Julian K will be coming out in the next few months. A lot of stuff happening. Lots Very of stuff good. happening. Very I'll good. be all over the country three times. Well, thank this you year. so much for making time for us today. I know you're getting ready to leave for tour, so I really appreciate it. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to see you. Awesome. Well, you guys can catch this episode and all the others on the EverTalk app. It's also available on Roku, so search it out and find Ryan Shuck because he's will, doing a lot of stuff. I will certainly <laughs> share this with all my fans. So thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs>